Welcome to Le Grand Voyage with Chateau Malatic Le Gravier. In the television series Downton Abbey, there's a scene where Robert Crawley, the 7th Earl of Grantham, the guy who owns Downton Abbey, is recovering from ulcer surgery. He's on a strict diet and presumably alcohol's totally out of the question, but his butler, Mr Carson, sneaks a decanter of wine into his room. Crumbs, says the Earl, that looks frightening. And Carson sort of reassures his master, it's a little Chateau Chasplin, my lord. This is presumably a kind of a clever Bordeaux joke by the scriptwriters. Chasplin can be translated sort of several ways, but Mr Carson would perhaps say it means dispels melancholy. Um, Elton John, who funnily enough, his backstage demands include excellent quality Bordeaux, he more likely translates as Chasplin as chases away the blues. The origins of Bordeaux's chateau names are a journey through the region in themselves. You know, some tell us about its history, some about its geography, some about its people, and they date right back to the very earliest days of the region. Now, chateau Ozon in saint emilion that takes its name from Ausonius, who was a Roman poet who's believed to have lived in a villa there. Now, chateau Pat Clément, that holds the title for the oldest documented vineyard in Bordeaux, and it's named in honour of Pope Clement V, who'd earlier been Archbishop of Bordeaux. Uh, chateau d'Agassac, that's an even older chateau, owned originally by Gaillard de Gassac. Uh, however, he was charged with protecting the city of Bordeaux from the French enemy, because at the time it was ruled by the English. And it was still in a marsh, so it wouldn't have made any wine anyway. But a lot of Bordeaux's chateau names, they connect in some way to the estuary and to the sea. Like, for instance, Chateau Béchevel, that belonged to the first Duke of Epinon, Jean-Louis de Nogaille de la Valette. Now, among his many titles, he was awarded the Admiral of France. And in his honour, ships sailing by his estate had to lower their sails as a sign of respect. And that's the origin of the name Béchevel. Bice voy, which means lower the sails. Of course, many are named after the people who founded the estate or owned it. Now, they tell this sort of very international story about Bordeaux. I mean, take the Irish and remembered in Chateau across the region. An early Jacobite immigrant, Robert Dillon, he bought what was known as the Terfort Estate in 1735 and promptly changed its name to Chateau Dillon. Both Chateau Langoa and Leoville Barton, they're connected to Thomas Barton of Fermanagh. There was John Lynch from Galway. He married Elizabeth Barge and together they gave us Chateau Lynch Barge. Uh, Chateau Boyd Cantonac, that was bought uh, in 1745 by Jacques Boyd, who was descended from a family of Belfast traders. Then, of course, there's Chateau Kirwan and Chateau Clark. Both of those come from Irish families too. Then there are the English names, uh, Chateau Talbot, that belonged to Sir John Talbot, Governor of Aquitaine, Earl of Shrewsbury in the 15th century. In 1452, Talbot was ordered to Bordeaux, and when he arrived, he repaired all the council garrisons who were facing mounting pressure from France. He was eventually killed on the 17th of July, 1453, at the Battle of Castillon near Bordeaux, which effectively ended English rule in Aquitaine. Reports at the time say his horse was killed by an enemy missile. The horse fell and pinned Talbot down, and a French soldier came and finished him off with a battle axe. Shakespeare remembers him in Henry the Sixth, Part One. A valiant Lord Talbot, Earl of Shrewsbury, created for his rare success in arms. Chateau Palmer was named in honour of another soldier, actually, Major General Charles Palmer, although his end was rather less glorious. Palmer's father had introduced the mail coach in England, and Charles himself joined the 10th Dragoons, who were a regiment known for their elaborate and expensive uniforms and the fact you needed a, a very high personal income just to become an officer. He'd served with the regiment in the Peninsular War and become very close to the Prince Regent, who was their colonel-in-chief, but... Eventually, he was bankrupted, both by owning the property, but particularly because the Prince Regent shunned his wine and his local manager fiddled his expenses. It's not just the English. There are Scots like George Smith, 
he bought an estate outside Bordeaux that today is Chateau smith Haute lafitte It's a, an interesting place. It's on a very high, sort of gravelly plateau. And that gives us a clue to the other part of its name. Many parts of Bordeaux's chateau names refer to the geography of the region. Lafitte is probably derived from the Gasconic La Quitte, which means a small mountain or a hill, given that Bordeaux is pretty flat, they're very small mountains. Uh, Mouton may be the French word for sheep, but actually the name here is derived from Mouton, which also means a hill or an elevation. Brion means a height or a hill. So from the outset, having a vineyard on a lifted site was obviously regarded as useful and something you'd crow about. It's not just height, though. What your vineyard is filled with matters. A Chateau du Cru Bocayou was bought by Bertrand du Cru and is named in honour of the beautiful Beau Pebbles, Caillou, in the vineyards. Chateau Belgrave got its name in 1845. That was when Bruno de Veille, negociant on Bordeaux, bought what was Chateau Coutonceau, but he wanted to show the world how much he favoured grapes grown on gravel tailloirs. Belgrave. Of course, those are just the rocks on the surface. Chateau Roche Bell gets its name from the beautiful Roche, the Bell Roche, that were mined in the underground quarries at the estate in the 1700s. And what of Chateau Malatic La Gravière? Well, Domaine de La Gravière was a very highly regarded estate and known for its excellent terroir. But it was bought at the end of the 18th century by the, found, the family of Count Hippolyte de Moray de Malatic. He'd served in the armies of the kings of France, and, and as an admiral, he'd fought against the English, particularly in 1756 in the Battle of Quebec. Today is actually a town of Malatic on the Malatic River in northwestern Quebec in Canada. He died as a French colonial governor in Mauritius, but he's remembered every time we see his ship and his name on this bottle. Anyway, join us again tomorrow for more stories from Bordeaux with Le Grand Voyage. See you then. Thank you.